The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Fourth chapter, text number nine, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 25th of July, 1966, in New York, New York. Janma Dharma Me Dibbam Jo Beti Tattataha Tatra Deham Punat Janma Naiti Maneti Kauntiya Lord Krishna says that the process of my birth and the process of my activity, they are all transcendent. And anyone who can understand the transcendental activities, appearance, disappearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then the result is that tattā dīham punat jarma naiti mā naiti kaunte. The result is that anyone who understands these transcendental activities of the Supreme Law, tattata, in truth, the result is that he becomes a liberated person. tattā dīham, tattā means by quitting, by giving up this present material body, he at once is transferred to the spiritual world. Tatta deham punat janma naiti. He does not require to come back here in this material world, to have this material body. He at once develops his own spiritual body, just like Krishna. This is the process. Simply by understanding the transcendental activities and the appearance and disappearance, he becomes fully spiritualized. And the result is that he at once, but at, he does not get the spiritual body is already existing. I am spirit. I have got my spiritual body. But that body is now covered by this matter. So, by understanding the transcendental activities of Sri Krishna, by Sri Krishna consciousness, one can become liberated. And what is the result of that liberation? That is also spoken in the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. The Lord says, Ma Mupeta Kaumpeya. My dear Arjun, Kaumpeya, son of Kunti, he is not it. That Ma Mupeta, anyone, who comes to me, Mamupetra Pontya Dukhalam Asasatam Napnubanti, that he does not come again to the material world, which is Dukhalam, Dukhalam, a place of misery. This material world is satisfied by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the place of misery. Now, if this place is made for that purpose, just to give us miseries only, how you can make it a place of happiness? The place is meant for that purpose. So Lord Krishna says that Someone, anybody who comes back to me, he hasn't got to come back again to this place of misery. 
सत्ता दे हम पुनर्जन्म मना की माँ में एमेजन से माँ रूपे सतम पिया दुखालय मथा सतम डिस्प्लेस ही फुल ऑफ मिजर वी आर डिलूडेड इल्यूशन वी आर एक्सेप्टिंग दिस प्लेस एज परमानेंट सेटलमेंट वी आर मेकिंग प्लान सो मेनी प्लान टू मेक ए परमानेंट सेटलमेंट बट द लॉर्ड सेस इट इज नॉट ओनली फुल ऑफ मिजरी अथाथम यू कैनॉट रिमेन हियर परमानेंट आई वर मेक मेक योर प्लान टू लीव हियर परमानेंटली You cannot leave here. You have to give up. You can spoil your energy for making this material world very comfortable, or you may leave for some years very comfortably. But cruel death will come and snatch you from all comfortable position and put you into another position which is beyond in your control. You cannot say that I have made my position very secure and very comfortable with great endeavor by advancement of economic development, by advancement of material science. Let me remain here. I am very happy. The time will say no. That will not be allowed. You must live immediately. Immediately, without this, you know, you are President Kennedy. You are going in a procession, and the time comes, and he has to leave everything at once, at once, without any hesitation. You cannot hesitate. So we are in the grip of the material nature. However, we may declare ourselves that we are independent. We are not independent. We are dependent, completely dependent. We may foolishly mislead ourselves by the sense of independence. No, we are not independent. We are completely under the control of the. Material nature, they will be sad. No, my mama was good at that. The the material nature is so strong that it is very difficult to get out of the entanglement. But there is a way. That is also said in the Bhagavad Gita. Mommy was a prabandante. Maya ne tam sarantite. Anyway. Who surrender them to me? The whole process, the whole process of material activity, material nature is going on under this principle that we are required to go back to the eternal world to get our eternal life and eternal blissful knowledge. These things are awaiting us, but if we do not try, do not endeavor for attaining that sublime position and spoil our desert energy in making an adjustment of this temporary material world, that is our foolishness. You will, you will find in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says. नमाम प्रबंधनते मूढ़ा दुष्कृतिनो नराधमा माया अपरित ज्ञान आसुरी भावमास्ता लॉर्ड से द देरा पर्सन हुआ दुष्कृतिनो दुष्कृतनो मिस्क्रियंस मूढ़ा पुलिस दुष्कृतना मूढ़ा एंड नराध हमा एंड इज लोएस्ट ऑफ द ह्यूमन टाइम एंड माया अपरित ज्ञाना एंड दे हैव बीन 
plunder of their real knowledge by the stringent laws of material nature. Such people do not come unto me. So these things are, if we study Bhagavad Gita, we have to take it, Bhagavad Gita, as it is. We cannot give our own interpretation just to suit our purpose. This thing already been explained in this fourth chapter that it is understood by the parampara system, by the disciplic succession. So we have to take up this knowledge from the disciplic succession. And this Bhagavad Gita was spoken some millions of years before to the Sun God, that is also stated. And the Sun God instructed this Bhagavad Gita again to Manu, Manu the Thaku, and in this way this is coming by disciple succession. But during the time of Purukshetra war, that great philosophy of yoga system of Bhagavad Gita was lost, and therefore Lord Krishna again said to Arjuna, Therefore, if we want to understand Bhagavad Gita, then we have to understand as Arjuna understood. That is the process. So here the Lord says that uh, janma karma may be gone. My appearance and disappearance. Mark this word, appearance and disappearance. Birth and death is not applicable to law. Birth and death is applicable to this material birth. The material body has its birth and the material body has its death, dissolution. But the spiritual body is eternal. It has neither death nor birth. Therefore, the spiritual body, the exact language to be used, appearance and disappearance. I have several times spoken in this meeting, just like the sun. The sun disappears and appears. For the sun there is no question of birth and death, because sun is eternal. Anything eternal. So when the Lord comes, it is just like the sun appears and sun disappears. It does not mean because we do not see Krishna just now in our presence. Of course, in transcendental sense, when we acquire that transcendental sense, we see Krishna through this Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is Krishna. It's not, Bhagavad Gita is not different from Krishna. That is the, uh, I mean the uh, sense of absolute knowledge. In the absolute world there is no difference between the person and the world. Just like this uh, tape recorder, it is being recorded. My words or my songs are being recorded. But they are different they, from me. This is dual, the world of duality. But as the absolute world, there is no such difference. Just like you are chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. This name Krishna and the personality Krishna is the same. It is the same. Hare Krishna means when I hear sound, the transcendental sound vibration, Krishna, that means Krishna is on my tongue, on my ear. Therefore, if we chant this 
vibration of transcendental sound with devotion and with attention, that is the highest type of meditation and yoga. I'm very easy. The process is that you chant Hare Krishna and exactly the same sound is here. So your mind is concentrated on this Krishna and Krishna is not different. This sound Krishna is not different from person Krishna. Therefore, when we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, it is as good as Krishna. Therefore it is stated here that my appearance, disappearance and activity and glory is that vibham. Vibham means transcendental. They, not, they do not belong to this world of duality. This world is of duality. But transcendental means that it is above, above this dual, dualism. It is the absolute world. So anyone who understands this fact that Krishna is not different from the sound Krishna, Krishna is not different from this Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is not different from the from anything which is connected with Krishna. These things have to be understood. The whole world is the representation of the energy that we learn in the seventh chapter. Is the manifestation of the energy of Krishna. And it has been described there are two kinds of energies, the lower energy and the higher energy. And the higher energy is the living entity, just like we are. We living entities, we belong to the higher uh, nature of the Supreme Law. Jiva Bhuta Mahabhavo Jayadam Bhajati Jagat. This world is moving. This world is made of lower nature, material. And the higher nature is the living entity. So anything which is connected with Krishna, it becomes to be a higher nature. Even in these material things, if it is dotted with Krishna consciousness, then it turns into higher nature. The example as several times repeated, just like you put a, an iron rod in the fire, it becomes warm, warmer, and gradually it becomes red hot. When it is red hot, it is transformed into the nature of fire. It is no longer iron. Similarly, if you constantly remain in Krishna consciousness, you at once transfer yourself to the higher nature of Krishna. And that is the only way. And if we can die in higher nature, then this formula, Tatta Deham Punarjanma Naiti, oh, he does not come back again to this material world. So we shall have to try, we shall have to practice this Krishna consciousness in such a way that we shall permanently exist in higher nature. And if we can die in that higher nature, then our place in the transcendental world is reserved. That is the whole thing. In, in India, there is a common saying. They say, bhajankara pujankara morte janle ha. The meaning is that 
However, you may meditate upon, you may be very great meditator, or you may be a great religionist or yogi or a very learned scholar or whatever you may be. But everything will be tested at the time of your death. How far you have made progress, that will be tested at the time of your death. That is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Janajana bhapi smanan loke tadatante kalevaram. Ante. Ante means at the end. Because this body is your to end. Antavakti me deha. This body is antavakti. It is destined to be ended. As sure as death. But mitta sutta sari vina sarīna, but it's the spirit spark which is occupying this body. That is nitta, that is eternal. So whole process is that the eternal has to get rid of this non-permanent material contact. And he has to take leave for the spiritual world. So the whole process is that during our present existing life we have to practice in such a way that we remain constantly on the higher nature, on the spiritual nature. Exactly in the same way, just like you put the iron rod in the fire and make it warmer, 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 and so long it does not get red hot. So it becomes fire. This is practical. In the same way, you have to put yourself in such a way that you are always in, constantly in the higher nature. Not that for one hour, two hours, we make this association. We try to be in higher nature. And after leaving this place, we again turn to the Lord. No. We should always, whatever we hear from here, from this place, we should try to understand clearly, without any doubt. Just like Lord Krishna says here, Tattadeham Punajjana Naiti Mahaniti Kantya. The anyone who understands Krishna's appearance, disappearance, and activities, all these transcendental things, he goes back to the kingdom of God and after leaving this body. Now this fact should be clearly understood. So I am trying to make you understand it clearly, how it can be possible. This is possible in this way that you have to think of Krishna always. How is that the Krishna appears in his uh, transcendental body and how he disappears? So everything scrutinizing, we have to understand. In the Bhagavad Gita you find that with the pranipatena, paripasnena, sevaya, one has to learn all these things from the person who is in the knowledge of these things. It is not that simply by purchasing one Bhagavad Gita we understand everything. No. That will be pranipatena, pranipasnena, sivaya. You have to approach a person who is in the knowledge of the things. Without this, you cannot understand. That is recommended. It is essential in the, uh, I would say, in the Vedas also, Kathopanisha, this is said exclusively, Tatma, Tatma Gurum Prabhadeva, Jigyasu Seya Uttamam. Tatma, Tatma means therefore. Therefore means something has been said before. What is that? Tatma Gurum Prabhadeva, Jigyasu Seya Uttamam. As soon as we began to ask 
about the our nature. That propensity should be awakened. In the lower nature we are busy in the matter of eating, sleeping, defending, and sense gratification. So we should not be satisfied simply remaining in the lower nature. The human life is made for developing the higher nature. The Vedanta Sutra therefore say, Athata Brahma Jitnyasa, now, now you have got the developed consciousness of human body. Now, this is the time for asking about the Supreme Brahma. So this higher nature has to be developed. This association, this transcendental association is meant for developing that higher nature. Higher nature. We, we, we must understand that higher nature, that it, as it is, it is recommended in the Vedas, that tadvigyanātham sa guru neva vijatse samitpāni sūtyam brahmanishtam. And again, in the Srimad Bhāgavata, it is said that uh, tasmāt guruṁ prabhaddeta jīgyāsu śrīya uttamam. In all these scriptures this is said. Without approaching a person who can teach you of the higher nature, you cannot develop. It is not possible to acquire. You have got the higher nature, but to invoke that higher nature, he requires the assistance of a person who is in the higher nature. That is the common. If somebody says that I don't require any help of any spiritual master, that is wrong. That is wrong. You will find all the great persons, so far our Vedic culture is concerned, great learned scholars, just like Sankaracharya, perhaps you have heard the name of Sankaracharya, Ramanujacharya, Madhyacharya, Nimbarka, Lord Chaitanya, in India, there have been many, many great scholars. Even Krishna, Krishna, He is the Supreme Personality of God. He had a spiritual master because He wanted to show the example. He did not require any, um, uh, any, any circumstances to acquire knowledge from any other. But because He was playing just like a human being, so he set the example that he accepted his spiritual master. And there, is, there are instances. So similarly, Lord Chaitanya also, he accepted spiritual master. Sankaracharya accepted spiritual master. That is the system. Evam parampara prapta nyunga raja vidu. The disciple's succession must be accepted. So just like we are trying to understand from Krishna, Arjuna, Arjuna is trying to understand. Arjuna also said to Krishna, Shishas Deham Sadhimam Prapannam, just I am surrendering unto you. Accept me as your disciple, Shishya. Shishya means disciple. Shishya. Shishya, this, uh, this is a grammatical word, Sasdhatu. Sasdhatu, it is a verb from his, this word Shishya comes. Shishya means one, one who accepts voluntarily the disciplinary measures from the hierarchy. He is called Shishya. So, in order to acquire, in order to be situated in that higher nature, we have to approach a personality like Krishna or his representative and so the best thing is that Arjun, Arjun, uh, he got this instruction from Bhagavad Gita and he developed that higher nature. So we have to take from Arjun as it is. So we have to keep ourselves always in the higher nature. Then the result will be that at the time of death, 
at the end, tattā deham. And on seventy years so, the my days are counted. So I have to give up this body. The warning is already there. So we have to prepare ourselves. Just like when going some outer station from New York to California, you, if you wanted to go, you have to make your preparation, uh, say, fortnight before, reserving the seat and making all arrangements. Similarly, we must know that we have to leave this body and we must prepare for that. Unless we don't prepare for that, all of a sudden if death comes, then our whole life is small. That is the whole system. So we have to think of Krishna. This is the very easiest process. The how, what are the activities, how Krishna appears, how Krishna disappears, what are the nature of Krishna's activities. So we must try to understand this. The janma karma medibbam jo jana titattata. This inquisitiveness, the appearance and disappearance of Krishna and his activities, this inquisitiveness is transcendental inquiry. So we must know him from a person who are in the knowledge, and that way we shall be able to put ourselves constantly in Krishna consciousness. And the result will be that Pakta Deham, by quitting this body, we shall be at once transferred to the transcendental world. This is the problem. Now, in the next sloka, Krishna says that vitarāga-bhaya-krodha, vitarāga-bhaya-krodha, manmayāmāma-pāsita, bhavo gyanatapasa hūtāmad bhāvamādata. Krishna says that uh, Arjun, in the past there were many sages who, vitarāga bhaya krodha after surpassing three stages of existence, when they came to Krishna consciousness, they were liberated. vitarāga bhaya krodha Now, what is this rāga? Rāga bhaya krodha Rāga means attachment. Attachment. And vita rāga bhaya. Bhaya means fear. And krodha means anger. So these three stages are there in our life. And what are these? Rāga attachment in the lowest stage of our life, when we do not know what I am, I consider this body myself this deluded conception of life, uh, this is deluded conception. And when you have got too much attachment for this deluded conception of life, that is called rāga. Rāga. Mostly people generally, they are acting in this material world with this conception of life, that I am this material body. So, they are working whole day and night for making a comfortable uh, life of this material body. Uh, so they are part in the stage of rāga, attachment, attachment. And the next stage is bhaya, bhaya. And uh, what is that bhaya? Fear. Now, that's a, uh, uh, please don't talk. Uh-huh. Bhaya means that uh, there are persons, transcendentalists, who are culturing a transcendental knowledge, but they are very much afraid of conceiving that there is another world which is spiritual world, and that is also similar like this world, and the personality of God is there, and we have to go there and we have to leave as a servitor. So we carry the ideas of this world to that world. Therefore we are afraid. 
there are many transcendentalists who like the impersonal conception of the Supreme Truth. As soon as personal conception of the Supreme Truth is presented there, they are afraid of, oh, it is something material, it is not real. This is called Bhaya. But actually it is not that. Actually, this material world is described in the Bhagavad Gita as the parvata reflection of the actual spiritual world. He find in the fifteenth chapter that this material world is described as a abhata tree whose root is upwards and the branches are downwards. Have you any experience of this abhata tree whose root is upward and the branches and the leaves are downwards? Have you seen any tree like that? You have seen it, but you have forgot. You have seen. When you see a tree on the bank of a river or bank of a reservoir of water, you will find the reflection of the tree, just the opposite smarta. So similarly, this word in the fifteenth chapter, it is described that as an upvarted tree. That means the real tree is there. The real tree is there. Just like the example is given at several times that uh, the impersonalists, they describe this world as false, as false. But simply describing this world as false is not sufficient. What is the reality we must know? The, generally the example is uh, cited that in the darkness when you see a curling roar, you misunderstand it, that it is a snake. But actually it is not the snake. Now, this, this conception of a snake comes where from? Unless there is a real snake, how you conceive that it is a snake? That rope is false, that's not life. That rope is not snake, but there is real snake. Otherwise, how you get the conception of this snake? Just try to follow it. Without having the real snake, you cannot get this conception of snake. Similarly, we say that this world is false or shadow. The shadow Without being the reality, how there can be possibility of hand? If there is no reality of my hand, how the shadow of the hand can be there? So this world is temporary shadow that is accepted, but there is the real world which has no distraction. This world is distracted. It is dissolved, just like our body it is temporary, but it will be dissolved. Anything material that has got a birth, a, a, a stay for some time, a byproduct, a growth, a dwindling, and then vanish. That is the nature. Anything, just like this body, it was born from the mother's womb at a certain time, and it is staying for some time, and the body has got some byproducts. Like children, we have got some children, the byproduct. Then it is dwindling, just like I am getting older, anyone, everyone, we are getting older. And at the last, it is vanished. Similarly, the whole material world, it has a time of its uh, appearance, it grows, it makes so many varieties of byproducts, it dwindles and again vanishes. But Bhagavad Gita gives you an information. Parastasmasubhavana Vakta Vakta Sanatam. Beyond this material world, which is subjected to these rules of six changes, 
then another world which is sanātana. Actually there is an existence of a, an eternal nature, like this nature which you are experiencing. And that nature, transcendental nature, the whole Bhagavad-gītā scheme means to take you back to that transcendental nature. Because you are transcendental, you are eternal, you are blissful, you are full of knowledge, now you are covered, now you have to go back to that eternal world which is full of knowledge, full of bliss. So we have to prepare in that way. That is the policy of the human life. Lord Krishna says, the Vitarava, Vitarava, Vita means one who has been able to give up this attachment. Rāga means the attachment of this material world. So here Krishna also gives us an instruction that Vitarāva have prodha. There are persons who are too much attached to this material activity. They are called Rāga. They are in the atmosphere of Rāga. And there are persons who are atmosphere of fear. Oh, again we have got to a personal life. Ah, they are afraid of personal life. They want to make impersonal everything. That is called bhaya. And the first, second, and the third is krodha. Ah, they do not believe in any philosophy. Ah, let us commit suicide. Let us annihilate all this material existence. So we have to surpass, we have to surpass these three stages of attachment and uh, fearfulness and prodha and anger. Just, just like somebody commits suicide, when he is disgusted with this life, he commits suicide. That is called prodha by anger. So we have to surpass all these things. The Lord Krishna said, Vitarāga bhaya prodha. After surpassing these three stages of life, Vitarāgam Bhaiprada, Manamaya, Mamupāsita, one who is constantly conscious of me, Manamaya, and Mamupāsita, and accepting the center of my protection, Mamupāsita, Bahamo Gyanata Pusā, there are many sages who by culture of knowledge, and I mean, Spena, Bhavo, Gana, Puta, are purified by that, that process. Mother Bhava Madhata, and they attain uh, my superior nature. My superior nature. Just like the same example, just like putting the iron rod in the fire, and the iron rod becomes hot, red hot, gets the nature of fire. Similarly, if we constantly in Krishna consciousness, uh, being transcendental to these stages of haya and fear and attachment and krodha, anger, if we put ourselves completely under Krishna consciousness, then it is, uh, it is very easy to attain the superior nature of Krishna. That is the formula uh, given here. The uh, superior, how to attain that superior nature? Vitarāga bhaya prodha manmaya maa upāsita, maa upāsita. That is the main thing. One has to take center of Krishna. Maa mi vajap prakandandi. This very thing, everywhere you find this Bhagavad-gītā, that Krishna is chasing on his personal feature. Maa mi vajap prakandandi. Anyone who takes shelter of me, anyone who thinks of me, manmana, man, bhavamad, bhakta, so these things are there. Uh, simply we have to take up this thing, Krishna, uh, then everything, the whole solution is there. Jeevathāmāṁ prapaddhante, next bhārti, Jeevathāmāṁ prapaddhante, tāṁ sasīva bhajāmaham, mamo vatmāṁ vatmāṁte, Manishya Pāsya Sarvasaha. Now Krishna says, there are three kinds of transcendentalists. What are they? The impersonalists and the localized 
jogi and the devotees there are three kinds of transcendental what are the impersonalist impersonalist means this jnani those who are trying to understand what is brahma and try to negative thing this uh, this material world nitya nitya this is not brahma brahma is separate from this matter they are called jnani and there are yogi yogi means those who are trying to focus all attention to the super soul which is within our heart that is called yoga system yogi gyani and bhakta devotee those who are focusing all their concentration on the supreme personality of god and krishna so these three Classes of trans, they are all transcendental. They are not materialists. Materialists, they are concerned with this matter only. They are very much attached to Lord Ego for this material nature and short description of the material. But the transcendentalists, they are our these attached people. They are detached, but they have got free conception of transcendental idea. I have been stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhaganti Tattattva Vidas Tattvyam Yadhyanam Adhyam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Sarvati. Tattva, Tattva is the absolute truth. Absolute truth is non-dual. And that absolute truth is experienced in three ways. What are they? The Brahma. the the all pervading impersonal feature brahma and brahmeti parmatmeti parmatmeti means the super soul brahmeti parmatmeti and bhagwan bhagwaniti means the personality of god now these three conception of life have been analyzed in many of places and i am giving you a short description just like the sun you see the sun every morning what do you see you see the sun sign one feature is the sun sign another feature is the sun disk and another feature is if you are able to go into the sun planet you see something else that we have got have no experience uh, but we can see that uh, sun sign And the localized sun disk, but what is there within the sun planet? Uh, no, nobody has explained so far. Material science is concerned, but from Vedic literature we have got uh, information of the sun planet also that there is a, a supreme deity which is uh, which is which is known as the sun god, and uh, all the inhabitants there. they have got their body of fire and the whole planet is fiery that is also material we uh, and there is no reason to this believe it because the whole material uh, world is composed of five elements that uh, inferior nature earth water fire air ether mind ego intellect uh, so the sun planet is predominated with fire Fire is also matter. It is also material. So that as we have got experience, uh, we can test experience from what we see daily. And uh, as we have got three different vision of the sun, although the sun sign is uh, spread all over the universe, you cannot accept the sun sign as important than the sun disk localized. Which one is important? The sun sign is important, or the localized disk? Ah, the planet is important. The localized planet is. Ah. Similarly, the impersonal feature of law, which is known as Brahma, oh, that is not very much important. We find in the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma no aham pratistha. I am the source of this effulgence of Brahma. So this is one feature. 
But that is transcendental. When one thinks of Brahma conception of, uh, of the uh, absolute truth, that is also transcendental. When one thinks of the localized aspect of the supreme truth, that is also transcendental. And one, one, when one thinks of the supreme personality of Godhead, that is also transcendental. So here it is said, Je the Thamang Prabhadante, Tam Shatiyu Bhajamaham. Mama Matvan Vartnante Manusya Pata Sarvasa. Anywhere, any and the person who is interested in the transcendental feature of the absolute truth, they must be either the impersonalist or the localized or must be devotee of the God. So these three features are there presented of Krishna conception and how they are conceived and what are the different reasons try to explain in the next meeting. Uh, now you can put your questions. They have to take shelter of the Veda, just like uh, Sankarasaj. Sankarasaj is impersonal and uh, we, the Vaishnava, there are two, two classes of philosophers in India. One is impersonalist and the other is personal. So we, we, so far we are concerned, we are personal. And Sankaracharya is impersonal. Now, although there, we are two classes, impersonal and personalist, we take Veda as the medium of knowledge. We may give different interpretation. That is a, uh, another thing. But Either the party of Sankaracharya or the party of Vaishnava uh, and Acharya, they take the Vedanta Sutra, the Vedanta philosophy as the medium. But Lord Buddha, although we accept him as the incarnation of God, and he was born in India, and he propagated his philosophy from India, but, but because he denied to accept the Vedic principle, therefore he is known as a Because he, Buddha, did not accept the Vedic principle. He denied. And there was reason why he did not. That is a secret thing. That secret because his whole philosophy was to stop animal killing. Animal killing. Now, in the Vedic, scripture you will find animal sacrifices to the man. So he wanted to preach, stop animal killing. Now, if there is evidence from the Vedas that animal can be killed under certain circumstances, then his whole preaching becomes topical. Then he was obliged to deny the authority of the Vedas. And because he did not accept the authority of the Vedas, the Vedantists and the followers of Vedas, they call the Buddhist philosophy as a thing. This is the explanation. So one is accepted as atheist who does not believe in the tenets of the Vedas. That is the Saman Sarasvata Vedas. It may be a sound philosophy or whatever it may be, but uh, atheism, uh, one who does not believe in the uh, authority of the Veda, they are called atheists. Yes, this is explained in Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter. Matter is described as the lower nature of the Supreme Law. And uh, the spirit, soul, or the living entities, they are called the higher nature. Now, my present position is that I belong to the higher nature. Now I am entrapped with the lower nature. And so whole mission of my life should be to get out of the lower nature and be uh, uh, installed again in my higher nature. That is the whole thing.